Can you hear? Can you hear me now? We're going to get started so we can beat the raindrops because well, not that we are going to melt, but it would be kind of nice to uh, beat the rain. My name is Janet Simonen, and I was one of the people on the Intern Advisory Committee. Uh, the other people on the committee, two of whom are here today, are Susan Chair. Stand up, Susan. Paul Moose. I saw Paul somewhere. He's back there. Uh, Brad Shannon, Emma Spoon, Libby Larson, with some help from C.C. Schmelek as the youth representative when we got started. And our committee really thought that having an intern was a good idea for three reasons, kind of a trifecta. One is it allowed Bethlehem to have some extra staff assistance with the ministry of the church. Two, it was a chance for us to help someone with their educational and professional development. And three, which I think we should all take credit for and be happy about, is it was an opportunity for Bethlehem to really assist Luther Seminary and the church at large in helping to um, train a, a future minister for service you know, in our, in our church, wherever he would end up. So our committee agreed um, to support and to pray for Jack during his time here, uh, to meet with him every month. And we did that first in person, and then we did it uh, by way of Zoom. Um, and to generally just be there if he needed anything. Um, every month we would have a different topic to talk about, whether it was preaching or education or youth ministry or whatever. Um, and I think we did as well as we could do considering the circumstances, or as my mother would say, good enough for who it's for. And, <laughs> um, our job was really easy because Jack, though he was a younger person as, a, as an intern, he really came with a lot of, of maturity and professionalism from the get-go. Um, one of our members said that if a new person had walked into Bethlehem, they would think that we just had two uh, fully certified uh, ministers. They would never know that one was a student intern in training. And I really think that that's a testament and a compliment to Jack. Um, we learned a lot of things as a committee. We learned about each other. I didn't even know some of the people on the committee when we started out, and I think we sort of bonded over two years. And I think Jack learned a little bit about us. And to talk about that, we have Hilia Iverson, member of the worship committee and church council. Are you talking about that? Well, no, you're, 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 she's not been known not to talk. <laughs> um, well, I just. Uh, I just want to thank Jack. Um, I was mentioning to his parents, uh, Sean and Clayton moved here a couple of years ago now. Um, and so our family has really been blessed by Jack. Um, he's been Clayton's uh, confirmation um, teacher, one of the ministers that do confirmation along with, of course, Pastor Mark, um, for two years. So that was really special. Um, Clayton got to go on a wilderness canoe trip. Um, his first summer here, which was amazing. Um, and uh, so that's been really nice. And then um, Clayton just a few weeks ago went through and was confirmed with all of his other, um, his bros from confirmation. Um, and then Jack also helped um, and was one of the ministers at Sean and our wedding. And then he also helped baptize Hattie. So he's really been part of our family. He's in a lot of family pictures <laughs> <laughs> at important times. Um, and so, I, you know, I just, as a, as a longtime member of the church, I just have really appreciated having Jack here. And I also um, really have appreciated how much our church just kind of welcomes people in and, and, um, and you know, helps people grow um, in whatever way that is. And for Jack, that was as a, as a student intern um, minister. So... Is that what you wanted me to say? Yeah. <laughs> I was not told I would be speaking other than to read off my list. So, Go for it. am I doing the whole thing? Yeah. I thought we were doing this no, together. No, no, no. Oh, I didn't write this, but I'm reading it because I do as I'm told and she's my mom. Okay, <laughs> so my mother and I both have an appreciation for David Letterman and his top 10 list that he used to do. For those of you who are David Letterman fans, you'll get this, and maybe for those who aren't, you still chuckle. So here is the top 10 
list of things that Jack learned about Bethlehem. Number 10, the church council thinks that it's in charge, but really it's the BLCW that runs the show. <laughs> Number nine, Pastor Mark thinks he's in charge, but really it's Denise. <laughs> Number eight, we remodeled the front of the sanctuary and took out some pews, but that's okay. No one ever sat in the first two rows anyhow. <laughs> Number seven, it's a mortal sin to buy Christmas trees or boughs for decorating. <laughs> Number six, you lock up the church at night for security reasons, but make sure that the hidden key that everyone knows about is in the place in case someone needs to get it. <laughs> Number five, change is hard. You know that when the projection screen in the sanctuary rolls down, the blood pressure of some of the members still goes up. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, when Pastor Mark says he's going to give a talk about the birds and the bees, he really is going to talk about birds and bees. <laughs> Number three, we had the old black hymnals, then bought the red ones, then green ones, and then the blue ones, and then got new red ones, and now we just purchased purple ones. We're going to keep going until we have a hymnal for every color in the crayon box. <laughs> Number two, they say that we live by grace, but we'd really rather live by eating walleye. And number one, if we run out of communion wafers, we can always whip up a batch of lefsa and cut the sheets into tiny pieces. <laughs> this is most certainly true. And now we have a few gifts um, that we're going to present to Jack now. There are more gifts that are personal gifts people have individually passed um, for us to give him, and I don't know if he wants to open them now or at a later date, but if Jack could stand up and come up, and then Kathy Bolstead, you are first on behalf of the quilters. And if you just stand here, the mic will pick you up. Well, Jack and Sydney, on behalf of the quilters of Bethlehem, we'd like to present you bug free <laughs> with a quilt because of all the wonderful things that Jack has done for us and we just appreciate you so much Jack good luck and have a wonderful life both of you thank you thank you so much And the quilters, just to be noted, also purchased, let him pick out a cassock or an alb and some of the, what are the belts called? Belts? Picture. So, yeah, some of those too. Uh, but they already gave him those because they wanted to see it on him. Um, Susan, do you want to come up? And this is on behalf of the congregation. Yes. Jack, on behalf of the congregation, this is a hand-woven stole uh, by Mary McDonald, who's a member of the congregation, and she's a type of artist. Mm -hmm. So, specific washing instructions for hand woven wool stoles. I thought that was a nice touch. <laughs> and there was a book in the bag, Christian Discourses, The Crisis and a Crisis in the Life of an Actress, Soren Kierkegaard, with Howard Hong and Edna Hong as translators. So that is kind of special. Here you go. Thank you. Eric Anderson. I 
couple things I'd, I'd like to say. Um, it's been just a, a pleasure working with Jack, and um, I've been so impressed by him. Uh, I, too, have been amazed at his ability to, uh, his preaching ability, his, his ability to work in the congregation, leading services and working with people. You would not believe he was, uh, he was an intern. He looks like he's had years of experience. And um, his work ethic is amazing. Um, I live across the, the alley, and very frequently I'd, I'd see his car out there uh, parked by the church and the light on in his office up to midnight sometimes, you know, where he must have been working on papers and, and doing all sorts of work in that room. Um, I, too, was doing uh, heavy research and, and work on spiritual things and, and well, not really. I was probably watching cat videos on, on YouTube. But um, I'd see him in his office, um, and uh, his his car would be parked out there in his car. Um, Sydney, do you have a nice car? <laughs> That's good, because his car, you know, you need to have at least one decent car. Um, I remember being... I remember being in my 20s, uh, vaguely, uh, and, you know, in your 20s, you want kind of a, a cool-looking car to, you know, impress girls, and it's like, clearly, uh, Sydney loves you and not because of your car. Uh, but, um, but we, you know, he's going off now. He's going to be a, a, a cool young pastor. Uh, and and make an impact on the world. And we're so very proud of him and, and pleased that that he could be here working with us. So a couple things. Um, you need a guitar if you're the cool young pastor. So I'm gonna give you this one. So. I'm, no, I'm, I'm giving, I'm just, I don't trust him to put in the case right. So. <laughs> All right, and finally, uh, on behalf of the, of the church council, um, we, uh, Randy Stengler, a member of the congregation, made beautiful crosses out of the communion rails that, uh, we took out and, and did some work with and so hopefully you will remember us and think of us and yeah. we'd love you to have this as, as not only from us as members but also a little piece of the church to take with you and wherever you might go and we also have this is a gift from the interim advisory committee so I don't know hold it if you want to rip it open yeah. here <laughs> Patty could help you rip it open <laughs> this is a print of the pencil drawing that Jim Rinquist made of Bethlehem you know a number of years ago so I called him up and he found one and he um, he was able to reframe it. And so now you not only have a piece of the church to bring with you, you have a picture of the church to bring with you. So you're welcome. And we, we have these other gifts here, but maybe you just want to take them. And if you want to open them later, they're from individuals, though this one is an anonymous gift from somebody. So if you were wondering who that is from, it will be a mystery forever. No, they dropped it up. Oh, it's from the church. Oh, well, then he should open it up. If it's from the church. <laughs> Anonymous from a church member. We might as well open up. We all want to know what it is anyhow. <laughs> Don't we? We do. Oh, yes. Yes. Patty. 
Do you know what this was, Dad? Kind of. <laughs> Be careful. That's all we know. Yeah, it's fine. So, Denise, this is a vase. <laughs> so it, so it's a hand blown glass. But where is Blanco? Nice. Cool. Very nice. So. Thing. You can you can you can sit down now. <laughs> the last thing we have, good Lutherans that we are, Clayton. We're Sean. We're going to sing a congregational hymn in four-part harmony <laughs> to the tune of the great Lutheran classic. Anybody? Anybody? A mighty fortress. Yes, we're also well trained. With apologies to. You know, Martin Luther, we tweak the words a little bit. I think it's in public domain now. What? It's in public domain. Patty so. May, oh, there you go. Patty May, no, no. No, no. La, 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 la. Thank <laughs> you.